you're here. Thank you so much for jumping on today. Uh, we have a really exciting and important and timely topic to discuss, which is as you're trying to transition to your, your classes from in-person to online, you know, what are the tips and tricks that will help you? And, you know, I'm certainly not the expert, but we are bringing in one of the experts, one of the many experts in the UIA um, to give us advice and to provide some suggestions. So please welcome Rosalind Miller, who is here from the Center for Distributed Learning from University of Central Florida. Welcome, Hi, Rosalind. Hi, yes. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here with you today. I'm so delighted that you answered our call in such short time and you were able to join us. So this is really wonderful. And I know that folks are already um, posting questions in Twitter uh, about what they'd like to hear us answer. And so we'll go through those. Um, but I also just in general would love to hear kind of your backstory of like what brought you to this can, and what is your background and experience so that folks can understand um, kind of your perspective on this, the subject. Right, yes. So. Um, Currently, I'm an instructional designer at the University for, of Central Florida, uh, which is uh, one of the largest universities in the US. And we have a very large online presence and a very large online infrastructure, which may not be everyone's situation, uh, but, it is, but it is ours. And uh, we're trying to make best use of that. I came to UCF um, about a year and a half ago from Mississippi State University, where I uh, was an instructor and uh, I created and taught online classes at the university level, professional development level, um, high school level, and, um, and I'm old, so I have many years of uh, other kinds of educational experience <laughs> before that, but uh, we won't get into all of that here. So you have taught in person and you've transitioned to online and you've also been coaching people figuring out how to go from not just, well, it help first give me the nomenclature right on online versus distance learning versus digital. What what are we talking about? And just in general, you have experience with all of it. Yes, so that, that's very important. So um, one thing that um, I do full time is to um, train and support faculty in designing online courses. And that's not the situation that we're finding ourselves in like, this month as we, as many colleges, universities, institutions are beginning to teach remotely. And so they'll be uh, transitioning their face-to-face -face courses into teaching remotely. Uh, it has, it does definitely overlap with online courses, but they are uh, definitely a difference. And we're gonna focus this discussion on how faculty can, who have been teaching face-to-face -face, can begin teaching remotely. Great. Okay. So let's just kick it off then. What is your advice? So I'm sure folks are asking you a lot of questions um, just in general about how can they do this and quickly and what do they need to know um, just in as much advice as you can possibly provide. All right. So yeah, so the main overall framework that we want to think about, something I already alluded to is faculty are not going to be building an online course. They are going to be trying to, in a hurry, temporarily move their face-to-face -face courses into an online environment or remote environment. So they'll really need to focus on the essentials. I'll just briefly describe the essentials of what they need to think about. One is communicating with their students. They'll need to communicate with their students and uh, provide access for their students to communicate with them and tell students how the, they can communicate with the instructor. The other three things that faculty should be thinking about right now as they do this temporarily is to think about how they're going to deliver their content to their students, so content. Um, students are need, going to need to know what they need to do and how they'll submit it so that they uh, need to be thinking about how you're going to provide students access to their assignments. And then thirdly, um, students need access to feedback from you, the instructor. So essentially you could boil that down to grades. So uh, again, those four, communication, content, assignments, and grades are what faculty need to initially think about as they make this transition in a hurry from face-to-face -to, -face to online. Great. Okay. So, and what are the platforms that you are hearing folks are, obviously everyone's talking about Zoom. I wish I had a lot of Zoom stock right now, right? That's right. The, one, the one good investment. Yes, uh, yes. Um, so what else are you hearing about? 
Um, so we, um, so yes, Zoom is um, a great, it is a very good platform, a very desirable platform. Zoom does have some uh, free uh, features, but for classroom use for more than one, like more than one other participant, uh, will really need a paid subscription, either individually or by the institution or department. Um, oh, um, OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, is a free uh, platform that can do many of the same things that Zoom does. Um, that's, and uh, you, can, you can search for that and download that, and it has great tutorials too. Um, a, a, a number of faculty, online faculty, like to use Adobe Connect. Um, I don't, that's not free, I don't believe, but uh, it's also popular. And um, faculty should also look into their institution's learning management system to see what conferencing um, software platforms they have in there. And then one other uh, is uh, Camtasia, which is a pay service, but also very powerful. Those platforms can be used for, uh, some of them can be used for live synchronous uh, interactions with students. Some of them can be, uh, you can create pre-recorded lectures, videos. Uh, some can do both. And what's your personal preference? I've also, I would add Shindig is a platform that I know. Um, yes, and I have not used Shindig, but yes, um, I, I have heard uh, Shindig is also uh, popular. We're gonna experiment with that next week of trying to figure out how to take some of the South by Southwest workshops online, just because we wanna try and figure out how to create that kind of virtual side conversation environment and that kind of the breakouts. Cause I think a lot of faculty, that's what they're trying to figure out is, you know, it took a long time to figure out how to create um, really dynamic interactions in the classroom. And now to have, to, to be, you know, kind of somewhat not have that option, how do they replicate that online? So yeah, I think- Yeah, that would be great. That'd be terrific. Okay, so what are the challenges that you're hearing about right now from faculty uh, reaching out to you? And let me couch this in the context. This, um, this problem is really only days old and hours old for many. So this is still in the very initial sort of shock stages of what I'm going to do. Uh, what I have found, uh, I'm talking to face-to-face -face instructors, instru instructors who have never taught online, is they don't know their learning management system very well. So that would be my first suggestion for uh, faculty who um, is to think about how well you know your learning management system and to, to get to know it. And I can give pointers now for that or, or later. Uh, another challenge is for faculty or who are already thinking about what kinds of things they were going to be doing in the next few weeks and how they are going to try to accomplish those goals. For example, um, uh, if, they're, if they were planning to give a major exam, what are they going to do? If they were planning to have uh, group projects and presentations, what are they going to do? Those are the major things that I've heard. Um, and so what's been helpful, what's helpful for folks who are trying to address those challenges? Where can they look for resources and um, where is their community? I know there's a ton of online stuff. I mean, there are quite a few communities that have been, communities of practice that have been working to support this, but that's, all, it's, it's almost like there's a lot of material out there and it's a lot of PDFs and a lot of downloadables and you got to kind of mine through things. So we're trying to surface just like the human storytellers and the people who can tell us their personal experience. So how are, what are you suggesting folks, how do they solve those problems? Yes, and, and again, this, this is uh, for sudden and short term. This isn't for long term and having a long time prepare. But first, um, search your university's um, like the Center for Teaching and Learning, or if you have an online learning center or teaching center, uh, first look for your, un your institution's resources for uh, getting to know your LMS your, um, and learning your LMS. Beyond that, um, most LMSs have, I believe, excellent resources online that you can just search for. So if you want to learn how to create an assignment in your LMS, Google it. You can probably find good either uh, reading documents or videos to tell you exactly what it is that you want to do. And so um, after you look at your institution, what they have to offer, search for what you're looking for specifically to get to know your LMS. Great. Okay. So what, uh, 
do you have any simple suggestions for so 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 I'm a faculty member. I know I have either Blackboard or I have some kind of uh, of uh, system where I already communicate with students and assignments are happening, um, but they normally come to class. So I've been handed a Zoom account from my university, which is what I'm seeing happening, um, and I have class coming up on Monday. What are like simple tips that you would say uh, that would be helpful for someone trying to translate any of the kind of transition points or experiences of the classroom into that online environment? Yeah. Okay. So um, one, I would consider whether uh, what you want to do with your students requires for you to have a whole class interaction or whether you can uh, pre-record videos. Uh, really think about that. And that's going to be different for, for different faculty. If you really need that classroom interaction with you and the students with each other, then by all means, go ahead and um, uh, download Zoom. If your institution is providing it, do a little practice with your other faculty members. Um, perhaps if you can get an experienced faculty member who has used Zoom before to give you pointers, or um, if, uh, if you're working with faculty that um, who have not used Zoom or online platforms before, then you can figure it out together. But you should be able to do uh, practice demonstrations with someone. Um, but again, think about what your objectives are, whether it would be suitable for you to pre-record short videos to provide your students, or if you really need that interactive whole class experience. Um, and then uh, one more thing would be to, um, again, look for tutorials in, in Zoom or whatever platform you're going to use to, to see what features it has and how to use them and then practice a little bit before you actually go in live. Great, super helpful. So, and I would also add that um, one thing that helps me is sometimes if I'm doing something live or in Zoom and I wanna prepare beforehand and get a capture, your computer likely has embedded software that is for capturing video. So quick time, if you're on a Mac, just shoot the video, you can delete it, you do a dry run through, so you figure out you know, transitions. Um, one of the pieces of it, when I was talking to folks yesterday that was um, really important, underscored for me was, have a strategy of how you're gonna start class. How are you going, what is, is it gonna be a prompt? Is it going to be, um, you know, cause folks are gonna be coming in and you have a sense of kind of the, 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 the psychic kind of like, trauma that's going on in terms of people are very stressed out. So just, you know, focus on how are you going to start class and then perhaps a prompt that's, you know, that's framing things in a positive light um, of, and also how you might want to conclude class. Just those two things would be useful. Uh, those, are, those are great ideas. Those are great pedagogy, whether you're online or in the class, but beginning the first few minutes is uh, really important for setting the tone and expectations for, for students, um, giving them expectations for what you're going to be doing, and then finally a wrap up so that when your session is done or your video is done, um, having a wrap up for what you expect students to take away. All right, awesome. So uh, the other question that I got from uh, Sean Ryan, thank you for for shooting us a, a note, um, and others. You can, of course, on the and if you this is being live on Periscope, YouTube, Facebook. Um, but if you want to, you can post comment, uh, post questions below the video, and just know that Rosalind is tagged, so she actually could be able to respond in the future. Um, and I want to make sure that folks know that uh, if you're looking for more information, you likely have a Center for Teaching and Learning, and they have or for a Center for Distributed Learning or um, folks who are professionals who have been preparing, who, who do this kind of work, so reach out to them. Right. Uh, but Sean Ryan asked, what are some innovative and practical ways to maintain student engagement in an educational environment online? So just, I think the focus there, the nuance to what we've already talked about is, um, are there particular tips around student engagement where it's not just lecture? Yes, and that's a, that is a great idea. So after you have done the essential things of putting on your content, um, putting your content, uh, giving access, uh, giving your students access to your content and making sure they know what to do and, um, and how you're going to give feedback, then there is time to look for um, opportunities for interaction. Uh, one is to use um, and I know this not, may not be necessarily creative or innovative, it may be the first obvious thing to, to most, but, but maybe not to all, is 
of using a platform such as Zoom to create live interaction for um, teachers and students. Uh, Zoom and other uh, platforms may have breakout rooms where you can assign students into small groups to give them assignments where they can uh, work interactively with each other in a small group. But beyond that, um, you can use your LMS to um, create discussions. For you at, I would suggest creating at least one discussion so that students have at least one place where they can ask questions of each other, respond to each other, and I would encourage the instructor to also participate in those discussions. They don't have to like police them necessarily uh, daily, but to, um, to look in them and uh, occasionally interact with them. Um, along with the creative and flexibility principle that we're going to need, think beyond what you had originally planned perhaps for the next few weeks, if you can. Um, if it works to, that students can still like learn what they need to learn, have them uh, perhaps do some group projects or some independent projects that they can do where they are and on their own time with some uh, flexibility, but of course to achieve the learning objectives that you want. And, and then they can have, they can use you, your LMS or uh, platform or Zoom or whatever to, they can create a group presentation online that they can upload. Um, there, are, there are several platforms to where they can uh, do uh, group presentations. So think, try to think beyond what you had actually planned to do in the classroom for a few weeks and uh, think about what students can do where they are and on their own time. Great. And then I've heard some folks, uh, I'll ask the last part of the question around diverse learning styles in a second, but I've also seen some advice online about adapting this current crisis uh, for the classroom and that it's it's taking up so much mental energy for everyone anyway. Why not actually make a learning experience out of it? A lot of folks are learning about public health in a new way, perhaps thinking about past experience, past, past pandemics thinking about where, what have we, what's happened in the past and, and evaluating from a public policy perspective, thinking uh, from a biology perspective, like there are ways to take this moment and if people are gonna already have a hard time not thinking and talking about it, there are ways to leverage it into the curriculum as a case study. Absolutely, if you can use this situation that you know all of your students are experiencing, then by all means, um, uh, you can create an assignment or uh, some sort of or project or some kind of interaction uh, around the situation that we're all experiencing together. Great, okay, so um, I would, uh, the last question was around diverse learning styles. So um, we know that we, we have challenges around this in the classroom, but any particular okay. advice about how to do that, how to support students with diverse learning styles in um, a distributed learning uh, classroom? Uh, yes, and that's a great question, and it's an important question. My uh, response to that is about the same as it is uh, in online as it is for face-to-face. -face. The more choice and flexibility you can give students in, in your assignments, then the more that they can respond, they can show their work in the way that works best for them. Uh, they can show their, they should be able to show their learning in, uh, in a variety of ways. And the more openness and flexibility you can give students in one assignment, uh, I think can accomplish that the best. The other alternative is, is to create a bunch of different assignments or assign students very different ways to do it. But if you can create one assignment that gives students choice, then I think that's um, most efficient and ends up with the best learning in the long run for students. Wonderful, super helpful. All right, so um, this, there's been quite a bit of advice in this space and I just wanna add for folks that if they have follow-up questions, where can they reach you? So um, they can email me at roslyn.miller, and I'll spell my name, R-O-S-L-Y-N dot Miller at UCF dot edu, or my Twitter handle is Roslyn Miller, or at Roslyn Miller, and uh, either of those places um, you, can, you can find me, and uh, I'll be glad to engage, uh, interact with anyone. Wonderful. And so we'll also be monitoring the follow-up questions that come here. And I just want to add that um, for folks who are following this conversation online, um, I 
uh, we're also going to be looking for students who have uh, been online students to give advice to students who are now transitioning to online. Um, I don't think that uh, that that necessarily administrators are right, the right folks to give that advice. Always, we want to right. make sure productive conversation, but in particular, we want to support low income, first generation students of color going through what we're all experiencing and learning from those students who have actually had historically a great experience online and have tips and tricks to um, help their peers and support them as they're trying to figure out uh, the different things that you can do to make yourself as successful as possible online. So um, that's also folks, if you have faculty who are exceptional at talking about this and giving great advice. We're interested in elevating you know, the UIA. We believe that we are not the experts. The experts are out there. We just want to amplify them. So, um, And we're also looking for students who are interested in talking about this and giving advice. So Rosalind, you've been so generous with your time and your advice and your wisdom. And thank you so much for offering yourself up as a guide for our community in the midst of this. And um, yeah, I just want to say thank you. And for our folks, uh, continue to submit your questions and we will uh, follow back up with another live to be able to respond and provide additional guidance. Thank you so much. Um, I've really enjoyed uh, being here with you. Wonderful. Thanks so much for being here.